You say, why is that, preacher? Because missions, is, as has already been said, I think Pastor Carter said a while ago, missions is the heartbeat of God. The only business that God's in is the saving business. He said in Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. You know, and, and Scripture after Scripture after Scripture said why Jesus came. What this about? It's about souls being saved. And so with that in mind, this is the most important business day for this uh, tabernacle, for this uh, lighthouse, for this uh, uh, saving station, for this filling station. Yeah, for this place right here, this is the most important business day. Because it's going to determine where you're going to go for God. It's going to determine, you know, do I want to be where He is? It may, no, it, it's not meant that everybody will go across the big pond. But as the pastor said, it may be across the road, though. <laughs> it, it may be across the, it may be to the co worker. It may be to that one that bags our groceries every day or checks us out. And, and, and therefore, it is the most important business day. Because, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that know the lingo. Saved. But see, Paul didn't just know the lingo. He had a story to tell. <laughs> he had a testimony. And with all his uh, intellectual ability, he didn't have to have a lot of words telling about the road to Damascus. <laughs> he just, you know, it was who he was. It was what his life become. You know, is he where we want to be is with him where we want to be is what is important to him important to us do we love what he loves he loves sinners he loves sinners that's who he died for he loves sinners he don't love the sin but he loves sinners and that's why he comes I want to I want us to look at if you please a a blueprint you know about about missions emphasis I, I it, it's a, you know I we've got example after example of people in the Bible that that they were they were excited about seeing people saved. They were excited about sharing the news. You know, you know what? This world needs some people that still believe in Jesus Amen. to the point, <laughs> to the point that they do want to be where He is. <laughs> and they don't want to love what He loves. And they do want to go where He says go. And they do want to talk to and talk about what he says talk about. And it don't just come natural. <laughs> the, the flesh don't want nothing to do with that. If that's going to happen in an individual's life, if that's going to happen in a, in a church, in a, an assembly of believers, it's going to be of God. Because nowadays it's not even, sometimes it's not fun walking across the street. <laughs> sometimes it's not fun just handing somebody a track and say, hey, have you heard the good news? <laughs> some of them may be friendly and some of them may be ready to bite your head off. And so it takes a lot. It takes a lot, you know, to, to do this, but we don't have to do it alone. You know, that's the difference. <clears throat> the Bible still says that... Uh, 
You know that the, the Lord, He can turneth a heart whithersoever He will. He can still do that. But He's got to have somebody willing. And I, wanna, I want us to look at a portion of Scripture this morning that I believe talks about a, a group of people just like that. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. This is a, a familiar passage when you speak about missions. But even with all the, the familiarity of it, I believe that there are some things in here that can on this Missions Emphasis Sunday that can help us, encourage us, uh, and challenge us, and even convict us for the need to keep on keeping on with God. Let's, let's go to the Lord and open up in a word of prayer. I ask you to pray for the service today. Pray for me that I would just say what God would have me to say, nothing else, and that I'd get out of the way and let Him... Uh, Speak to our hearts this morning. Let's pray. Father, Lord, as we come before you here today, Lord, we just want to uh, thank you for this here Lord's Day. Father, for the opportunity for us to, to be in your house this morning. Lord, I thank you for everyone that was able to make it out today. And Lord, I know there's some that uh, didn't get to make it out, but some are listening by way of uh, maybe Facebook, live stream, maybe Zoom. And God, I pray that you would uh, speak to their hearts right there where they are. Challenge them, Lord, on this here uh, wonderful day. Uh, and as Lord, as we open up uh, your word, may you open up our hearts in our minds. Give us ears that can hear, hearts that can be receptive to what thus saith the Lord. And Lord, uh, God, first, if there be one here today that doesn't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin, would you show them their need to be saved before this, uh, this service ends? And then, Lord, for ones that may be wondering, you know, now they're saved, now what, God? Well, Lord, you have a, a plan for each and every one of us. And God, I pray that you just meet with us here in a special way today. Have your will in your way, and we'll thank you for all you do, because we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Here, in, here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we'll begin reading in verse 1, and we'll read down through uh, a little bit of this. Um, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren... We do you to wit. Now that word wit, you know, means know. So we do you to know of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Now just to give you a quick little history lesson, you know, it was uh, one night that Paul... Uh, had a dream, had a vision, and an angel of the Lord was, was, uh, had, was telling him to come on over into Macedonia. And, and that was how that all got started. And he, he went over into Macedonia. And from that, you know, on one of his first missionary trips there, you remember uh, uh, that woman that, was, uh, that worked for, uh, she was selling stuff for that uh, evil outfit, for the lack of better words, know how to put it. And they, you know, she got saved, put them out of business. They were mad at Paul. But, you know, also the uh, Lydia got saved there. The Philippian jailer and his whole house got saved there in that place. Place. So a lot of history there. These people had a special place in Paul's heart. And verse 2 here says, How that in a great trial of affliction. No, you ever been there? Sure we have. The abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. Praying us with much entre entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also." Therefore, as, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. 
He says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. You know, if, you, if there's no love there, we're not going to go far, folks, for God. He says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now I'm going to stop there reading that for, the, for just a moment. I do want to go back to, to Malachi. And I want to, before I get into this, uh, to the main thought here this morning, I want to read a portion of scripture in Malachi and, uh, to us this morning, and we'll go from there. In Malachi chapter 4, you know, in, in chapter 4 and verse 8, the Malachi, he challenges the Israel, and he said, the people, the children of God, he says, will a man rob God? You know, that's the interesting question. Nobody in their right mind would want to rob God, right? Nobody. He says, yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? He says, in tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Then he puts a challenge out there, a command out there. He says, verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Wow. That's what he, Malachi said to the, to the children of God there. You know, but again, this thing about, you know, missions... I've been, uh, now I've been saved 24 years, not, not that long, and um, I had to learn all about this, tithes and offerings, and, you know, God's 10% and this and that, and not just of finances, but time, you know, God, you should tithe your time as well to God. Hey, look, the greatest ability that you can give God is availability. Now, he can use all your talents. He gave them to you. He knows you got them. Uh, just like when these ladies sung a while ago, didn't they do a wonderful job? Amen. Now, don't think that the devil don't know what, was, what you're trying to do here today. <laughs> right? We witnessed it there. Don't think the devil don't know how great of a day this is for Grace Baptist Tabernacle. <laughs> and he showed you. He tried to mess it all up. He tried to discourage. Hey, the greatest tool that the devil has in his toolbox for children of God is discouragement. And he even showed up and tried it, didn't he? He tried to take over the service and discourage already. But praise God that he's still on the throne. He's still in control of things. He's still the one. It said that by him all things consist. He's in control of it all. But you know, we, you know, we, we do, folks, have to make a decision where we're going to go with God. Where we're going to go with him. How far we're going to go with him. Hey, Unfortunately, sometimes in life we're looking for a place to, to throw in the towel. Yeah. It, life is not easy. I was teaching on regret and shame last week to the young people at the schools and uh, in a school talking to them about Esau and Jacob and in a life of regret and shame and how that it was 25 years. That's where Jacob had went to. With, you know, the regret and shame. 25 years. You know, his best friend died, mama. He didn't get to be there. You know, sometimes life can get out of control. Even for the child of God. Amen? Amen. 
You with me this morning? Sometimes, hey, hey, we're here this morning because we want God to have control of our lives. We want God to be leading and guiding our lives. We want God to be the pilot. I don't want to pilot this thing. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. <laughs> but I know this guy. And I want God in control. And it look here, it, it, if we try to serve God, give to God what he's, from what He's already given us, even go for God, you know, we're going to fail. If we try it ourselves. We do it in our flesh. We've got to, we've got to have God uh, lead in the way. And these, these folks here in chapter 8, this little old Macedonian church, I want you first to see their priority. Hey, I think if you're going to, if this church is going to continue on forward, and I know that's the desire of it, this is a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church of God that, uh, that uh, lets God be the over-shepherd. He's got Pastor Carter's the under-shepherd, and, and, and you are the flock, and man, y'all have been going on for God. And, but if you're going to continue to go on for God, and you're going to continue to make missions important... You know, you got to see the priority. Because look here. <laughs> it may not be on the best day. <laughs> it may not be on the easiest day. <laughs> it's raining today. <laughs> it's supposed to rain all day. And it's like, man, this is our, this is, hey, we, this is Missions Emphasis Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but the, but, the, but the world, life goes on. And look at these folks in verse 2. It said, how that in a great trial of affliction. <laughs> you know, how that in a great trial of affliction. Hey, they're ready to do something for God. But they're all, their lives are already in a great trial of affliction. Yeah. I mean, you ever... <laughs> there's no telling what you had to go through to get here this morning. <laughs> Just be honest, right? Sometimes, hey, by the way, anytime you get ready to do something for God, it may be a battle. <laughs> Everything that could happen may happen. And these, this little old church right here, they, they want to do something for God. And it said, how did in a great trial of affliction, then if you skip over that abundance of their joy right at this moment, it said in their deep poverty... <laughs> Man, they're a candidate to work for God, ain't they? Who, who wouldn't love to just do something for God when, when everything's a wreck and a mess? <laughs> right? No. We, we'd rather it be a little different, right? <laughs> we'd love, we, we would rather that things were in a little better shape, right? <laughs> but here it's a great trial of affliction. It's deep poverty. It's not going to always be bells and whistles, folks. It's not going to always be at the most convenient time in the best weather situation. Maybe not even the best financial situation. But God is still God then. <laughs> He's always God. He said, I'm God and I change not. That's why it's worth doing, because he don't change. He said, I'm God and I change not. But right here, <laughs> in this abnormal situation, this abnormal circumstances that they're dealing with here, I'm glad that there's still verses like Psalm 34, 19, said, many are the afflictions of the brethren, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Hey, they were in a great trial of afflictions, but my Bible says that, uh, that many are the afflictions of the brethren, but the Lord is the deliverer. He's going to deliver us out of them all. Amen. Hey, they had, they, they, they made God's work and God's business their priority. Hey, are you ready to make God's business your priority? Now look here, the difference maker. Look what they said there. It said, how that in a great trial of affliction, 
But also while it was in a great trial of eviction, hey, they had the abundance of their joy. <laughs> wow, those two things don't even go together, do they? Uh, when's the last time that we've, we've been under the load, under the circumstances, and we got a big old smile from ear to ear? <laughs> I heard about this missionary. He came back in to see his pastor. His pastor said, how's things going, brother? He said, well, pastor, under the circumstances. He said, hold up. He said, what are you doing under there? <laughs> but isn't that sometimes how we are? We're under the circumstances. And boy, you can't see God under the circumstances. Hey, they, the circumstances was all on, but they had an abundance of joy. Amen. Hey, <laughs> we only serve in the King of Kings. <laughs> The Lord of Lords. <laughs> hey, our God is only on the throne and in control of things. Hey, our God is, hey, he's not scratching his head up there wondering how this is all going to turn out today. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mess it up, did I? It takes a while to fix it. <laughs> there ain't much of it, but, uh, <laughs> but hey, see their priority. See their priority. And I tell you what, folks, that's what we got to see today is, hey, this is God's business. We don't got to figure it all out. We just got to show up and report to duty and be ready to serve him. Amen. Whatever the situation, we just need to turn it over to God. What did uh, second, first Peter 5, 7 say? Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Hey, we serve a God today that can do anything. Hey, the, the angel of the Lord told Abraham in regards to Sarah in her later years of having a child, he said, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Well, there's nothing too hard for the Lord today, brother. There's nothing that he can't do. He's God Almighty. Yes. But you know, we got to see the priority. God's in the soul business He's in the saving life business. And he, he's willing to let us have a part in it. If we'll see the priority. These folks, this little old church here, in the great trial of affliction, in their deep poverty, they said, hey, we want to have a part, Lord. They told Paul, they said, we want to be involved. Look secondly here. Not only you guys see their priority, but hey, uh, look at their power. Verse 3, it says, For to their power I bear record, Paul said. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. You know, Paul said, look here, boy. He said, that little church, they're a little old church compared to Corinth. <laughs> they were a little church compared to Corinth here. And they didn't have a lot of people. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of anything. But he said, hey, to their power, though, they, they, they were going to do what they could. <laughs> By the way, God's just wanting you and I to do what we can. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's not looking for us to, to get uh, above our means. He's not looking for us to do the impossible Hey, it's possible to be here today, wasn't it? Hey, it's possible to be at this great business meeting for Grace Baptist Tabernacle. It's possible to be here today. I'll stay right here, brother, so it don't mess up. It's possible, though. It's possible for us to be here. Hey, it's, it's possible for us to get involved in, in missions. You know, it's possible to give for missions. You know what it happens when you give for missions? It broadens your mission efforts. Right. Hey, over there in, uh, in Acts 1-8, there's a key word in there that our, when our brother read that scripture, listen what it said there. It says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. And now look at this word, both. This word is simultaneously. This right here is Judea. Because Judea is home. So right here in Chattanooga, this is Judea. This is Judea. Is it Judea? <laughs> Let me double. No, I'm sorry, Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem. And then 
Then you go a little further away from Jerusalem, your home here in Chattanooga, Jerusalem, you step out a little further would be Judea. But then he didn't stop there. He said, but then, you know, Samaria. You know, that's that place over there. You know, you remember Samaria, nobody wanted to go there. Do you remember people used to go around to not go through Samaria? <laughs> There's probably some places you and I, would, we just go around <laughs> rather than go through there. <laughs> that would be Samaria. But then there is the uttermost, <laughs> the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah. You know, places that we wouldn't dare go to. But the key thing is there, he said, he, so he gave four places of ministry, but he says unto me both. You do them all four at the exact same time. While you're serving here at home, you're also going over into Judea. Because that's close by Judea. It's not that far away. But then also while you're doing home and you're doing Judea, you're sending people maybe to Samaria. You're sending people even across the pond to the uttermost. That's what, hey, you're doing, you're doing both. But see, God realized that, that uh, we didn't have all that power for that. But God has all power. Uh, over there in Psalms it says, uh, Once have I saw this, twice have I heard that power belongeth unto God. God has all power. Hey, these, these Macedonians, uh, Paul said, look, he said, uh, he said, for to their power, their power was they were willing. You know, God can take a willing heart. God can take a willing person, a willing heart. And he can go somewhere and do something. You know, sometimes people say, well, I'd rather have 50 people that are sold out for the Lord than to have 500. Because it's not about numbers. It's about that heart. You know, when these, these Macedonians, they had a heart. And it all started called Paul come by there. And he had a heart for God. And he had a heart for the things of God. And he said, for to their power. He said, I bear record, yeah, even beyond their power. And the beyond the power was, hey, look, there's nothing like God's power. You know, the preacher said, uh, you know, go and then pray. You know, hey, look, uh, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Prayer makes all the difference. But God's power makes all the difference. Boy, if we'd just be willing to go in the power of God Almighty, things will happen. Things will happen. It'll make a difference. But you know, this is it. Hey, in their, you know, for their power. For, for to their power. And you know how you get that for to their power? Hey, Matthew 6, puts it like this. But seek ye the Lord and his righteousness. You know, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hey, this is all about God, folks. We don't got to, you don't got to do this as a church by yourself. You just gotta, you just gotta give of yourself and get started doing missions. Yes, there's been a pandemic. Yes, things have have gotten, uh, you know, uh, out of sorts somewhat, and rightfully so. Hey, this is a serious virus. You know, it's serious. It's serious business. But praise God that His work is serious business too, right? Now look next. Nextly, look at verse four. Not, not only is there, you see the priority, you see the power, but, uh, you know, uh, see the partnership. You know, God has, uh, God wants to give all of his, his people the opportunity to have a part in his work. Paul said of these Macedonians in verse 4, he said, pray in us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Now look here, Paul knew these people's condition. Meaning, he knew that, that they were in great trial of affliction. He knew they were a little church. He knew that they had big problems in, you know, just, uh, just making it. Because they were in deep poverty. 
He didn't go asking them particularly of an offering to go towards the work. In fact, they had to beg him. When he said they're praying us with much entreaty, these people had to beg him, say, hey, look, we want to have a part. Now, wouldn't that be a shocker today if, you know, Pastor Carter or somebody come up and they were begging to have a part, to give an offering. And, you know, Paul and them had, they said, look, they were praying with much entreaty that we would receive their gift and take upon us the fellowship, you know, of the, of the ministering to the saints. He said, look, these folks were, un hey, they'd stand out in today in the churches. Because they were begging the man of God to, to let their, their, their gift be part of the collection. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> hey, and by the way, if you, you got something you want to give to the collection for the church and the missions and everything, go towards that. Um, if you want to beg, that's fine, but they won't turn it away from you. Because <laughs> there's a work to do. There's a work to do. There's souls to be saved. There's lives to be changed. And, and yes, it, it costs to keep this place going. You know, hey, God is looking for people that are willing to take part in His work. God's looking for people who want to get hooked up. You know, he, God's looking, He's looking for people that... To, hey, do you remember when you first got saved? Maybe for somebody that's recently, but you remember when you, we first got saved and boy, people couldn't keep us quiet. People couldn't slow us down. <laughs> oh man, whatever, whatever the preacher said, we, we do it. We were there. You know, we didn't have to be probed. We didn't have to be begged. We didn't have to be, you know, and none of that had to go on. We were there. We showed up early for church. We were there. We were in our place. We were ready to do our part. If the, plate, if the plate was getting passed, we made sure our portion went in. That's who these, that's, that's who these little people in Macedonia were. They, man, they were going to be heard. They were going to have a part. They weren't like the big church, Corinth. You know, the Macedonians said, uh, don't forget us. You know, don't forget us, Paul. Let our, let our little part count. Hey, I'm glad that... Uh, God's not looking for the big I's or the big T's or the big U's. He's just, he's just looking for somebody who, who wants to have a part in His work. He's looking for somebody that just is willing to step out and, and do for God. Yeah. You know, the Bible said, you know, you know how God said it. He said, look, uh, by the way, we have, to, we have to take that first step. Right? He said, draw nigh to me. And I'll draw nigh to you. Oh man, if you, hey, you want to you wanna be where God is, as the ladies so graciously sung about, you want to be where God is, you want to you wanna love like God loves, you just got to take that step to God. And He'll take that step to you. And boy, before long, you and God will be like this. And boy, you'll be doing something for God and lives will be, hey, you can make a difference in lives being changed today. God's looking for some people that want to have a part. Now look here at the last one today. Look at verse 5. It said, and this they did. <laughs> you know, Paul summed it up. He said, this they did. Boy, when it comes to the things of God, don't you want that to be your testimony? This he did. I mean, we, we, say, we want to hear those words that, where he says, you know, uh, faithful servant. We want to hear those, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We, that should be every child of God's uh, a desire is to serve God in a way that when we finish this thing up, we can hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And, and Paul said of these people, he said, and this they did. Hey, they didn't just talk the talk. <laughs> they walked the walk. You know, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. They wasn't all talk. Man, they, they made it. They did it. They did. They did what was possible. 
Hey, they... <laughs> Hey, when we get saved, we're, we're, we're positionally, we're in a place positionally different than we were with God. I mean, God's always up, but when we were saved, we were on our way to hell. But when we got saved, we got a new position now with God. We're a saved individual. And hey, these people wanted to, they wanted to protect their position. They were that little church that Paul said gave again and again and time and time again to his need. And you know what? They, they liked having a part in that. They wouldn't stand for their position. This was their position was that they did, not as we hoped. Paul and them weren't hoping that they would do all this, obviously. They must have knew because of their, uh, their situation that they didn't, you know, they must not have had a lot of hope for them because he said, not as we hope. But he said they first gave of their own selves to the Lord. You know, have you, have you come and told the Lord, Lord, I don't know what, but... Uh, what is that that Romans 12, 1 says, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. And those two words don't always go together. Sacrifice about death. Living's living. He said that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He said, which is your reasonable service. It's the least you can do as a child of God is present your body a living sacrifice that you're going to live for him every day. You're going to put the old man on the on the get rid of him every day. Sacri Paul said, I sacrifice this old man every day. He said, I die to him every day. He said, hey, that's our reasonable service. Our reasonable service. You know, I want to share with you one more thing. And then I'm going to pull it in. Look over at chapter 9. You say, well, does it really make a difference? What we give, what we do. Does it really matter in the big grand scheme of things? Look at 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. But this I say, Paul said, to the church at Corinth. Now remember, Corinth, Corinth had made a vow. They had made a pledge a year before this, that they were going to give to the cause. But they never followed up with it. They never even began it. They never even started it. And Paul comes in here and he's using this little church of Macedonia to try and get them to see that they need to at least do what... Hey, God, God's people need to do what they say. Amen? And he was telling the church at Corinth this. And then he says this to him. He says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has purposeth in his heart, so let him give. God's not telling you and me what to give. He's just telling you that, look, number one, he gave all he had. He gave all he had when he gave Jesus. He bankrupted heaven the day that he gave his very best for you and me. You know, sometimes we, we give him what's left. Sometimes we may tip him. You know? Hey, I, I have to confess, you know, I mean... There were times I, in the past, in the 24 years I've been saved, you know, there were times that I would say, well, Lord, how am I going to make it? Lord, if I give you this, I won't be able to pay rent. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, look, I pay tithes. I'm a missionary. I pay, missionaries still pay, they better be, still be paying tithes. They will, hey, Rock of Ages will look. <laughs> <laughs> they'll send us out the door. I'm just be. I mean, we fill out a monthly report every month. It don't matter how many years you've been with them or what your title is. We have a, a strong accountability. <laughs> you've been supporting me, you said, since 17. You could call and find out what I did every month since 17. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he, 
You know, he said, every man, verse 7, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Hey, here's an old country where God controls the spigot. So it's all his anyway. God knows what this church is going to do for missionaries. And God's already got it. <laughs> it's no different than any church and their members. God's already got it. It's just in our wallets. And <laughs> we got to get it out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And, and give it. You know, I go back to what them, I guess I piggyback on what them ladies sung about, you know, do you want to be where he is? You know, do you want to love what he loves? Well, it's all going to, you know, our wants are going to, they're going to show in the effort that we put forth. Man, I've argued with this guy over writing the check out. He says, hey, look at it. Oh, you had it. It's going to work. I'm going to go tell Miss Powell that there's not going to be any lights, man, or there's not going to be this. But you know what? It says David said, he said, I've been young, or I've been old, and now I'm young, or I've been young and old. And he said, and I have never seen the righteous begging. Or, the, you know, the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Never, he said. David, David said, never, man. <laughs> he said, I've never seen it happen. And God's not going to let me and you be the first one to see it happen. He just wants us to have a part. Praise the Lord for a God that wants you and I to have a part in missions and seeing somebody saved. I don't know how that uh, Pastor Carter is going to close the service out, but I hope something's been said today that will challenge our hearts, convict our hearts, change our hearts for missions. The heartbeat of God. You know, the God's business. Father, Lord, during this uh, time of invitation, would you continue to speak to hearts, Lord? God, it's never going to equal up on paper. It's never going to look like it's going to work. Because, Lord, we have to... It goes beyond... Our comprehension, Lord. We just have to be willing to say yes, Lord. Yes. So bless this time of invitation now. In Jesus' name. Pastor Carter.